hey guys came across an interesting stock today as I was noticing a number of things in the market fell so I wanted to take the opportunity find if there was any other fundamentally sound stocks to add to the watch list and one that came up with one with the strange name and I'm still trying to fully understand what they do but I'm going to drop their story in the description and that is Haymanotics Corporation now as you know I break my stocks down into three tiers for those that make my watch list three star the most fundamentally sound two star a little beneath that and then one star the least fundamentally sound but still sound enough to be on the watch list Haymanotics Corporation is a two star like I said they're currently $71.70 a share and still dropping we've seen that out of the last nine weeks they've dropped for seven of them so we can see if they continue to drop move sideways a little while or when they're going to start to move back up in any event yahoo analysts estimate that they can move up to a hundred and four dollars and forty three cents a share in the next 12 months from their current price of seventy one dollars and seventy cents and we are going to look at the finances for this company right now but before we do that just a couple of other things I want to mention. It's these stocks that I am going to do the analysis on, they all end up in this week's stock winners when they start to move back up. So if you guys are not checking out this week's stock winners, which comes out every week in my channel, you want to keep an eye on that to see which fundamentally sound stocks are starting to move up and also if you're into options we also pick one of those stocks to go into this week's option picks and when we do that we actually well I keep saying we I should say I I actually buy the option so that you can see the progress of it over time but having said that let's jump into our stock okay so the company is Haymanotics Corporation I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly and the ticker symbol is HAE now Haymanotics Corporation. Let's start by looking at their high and low prices over the last five years. And this stock actually, we have the 2023 figures. So we're looking at it from 2019 through 2023. And we see in 2019, their low price was $81.74. High price was $138.52. That was an increase of 69.46% during the course of that year. In 2020, their low price was $74.34. Their high price was $121.82. That was an increase of 63.87% during the 
during the course of that year. Their low price in 2021 was $49.55. Their high price was $139.48. That was an increase of 181.49%. It's a massive percentage increase. In 2022, their low price was $43.77. Their high price was $86.14. That was an increase of 96.80% during the course of that year. And in 2023, their low price was $72.75, but the high price was only $93.49. So, in that year, they only had an increase of 28.51%. Now, if we look We'll notice that with the exception of 2022, their earnings per share was increasing every year. $1.4, $1.48, $1.55. Then it dropped to 84 cents. And in 2023, it increased again. $2.24. The projection this year is $2.46, but if we look at the projections for this year, Yahoo analysts project that it could move up to $104.43 from where it currently is, $71.70. If that ends up being accurate, the earnings per share stays consistent. It moves up to this price that Yahoo analysts are estimating from the current price. It will be an increase of 45.65% this year. Now, the earnings report is going to be released on May 9th of 2024. An earnings report for businesses is like a report card for kids. And the earnings report is on May 9th of 2024. But I've given Yahoo's estimate on what they feel it can move up to. Let me give my estimate of what it can move up to and what it can move down to based on what I see in the PE ratio. So let's talk about down first. If we look at the low PE ratios for this company for the last five years, this company is in demand because their low P.E. ratios are very high. That means people aren't letting them get too low before they buy them up. This P.E. ratio is not dropping to 5, 10, even 20. In 2019, the lowest was 78.60. In 2020, the lowest was 50.23. In 2021, the lowest was 31.97. In 2022, the lowest was 52.11. In 2023, the lowest was 32.48. And right now, the PE is 29.15. Normally, I look at the lowest PE in the last five years, and I use that to determine the probabilities 
of where that stock could fall to. But the lowest PE in the last five years for this stock prior to now was 32.48. And it's already below that. So the probabilities point in the favor that this may be around the lowest that this stock is. The probabilities would tell me that I shouldn't expect this to fall much further, but we'll see what happens. That doesn't mean it can't fall much further. I'm just speaking about the probabilities. Now, how much does it generally move up? I'm not even going to count between these two because it's massive. Here, from high to low, the PE, from low to high, the PE moved up 32. From here, the PE moved up almost 50. Here, 50. Here, it moved up 9. And here, it moved up 13. Let's do just 9. So let's say I took our current PE, 29.5. Plus nine gives me thirty eight fifteen times that by our current earnings per share times two point four six equals that gives me ninety three eighty four. But we know that these PEs can go a lot higher. We see some years where they went up 50. So let's say I was to just add 25 instead of 50. I'm going to clear that. I'll say 29.5. Plus twenty five equals fifty four point fifteen times two point four six, and that would bring me at around one thirty three point twenty. So there's a range in terms of where this stock can move up to. Yahoo Analysts, I use P-E ratio for mines, but Yahoo Analysts, they may, this may be more detailed. They may use other factors. Whatever factors they use, theirs is built up to be 104.43 is how high they feel it can go. In any event, having said that, let us look at the, um, let us start to look at this. Let's start to look at this fundamentals. We'll start by the income statement. When we come to the income statement, now notice that when I rated this company, I rated them a two star. And the reason I rated them a two star, there's two reasons I rated them a two star and not a three star. And they're both looking at you right now. And I'm going to show you what those are. The first thing is their profit margin. 
in 2019, this company made $967,579,000. Of that, they retained $55,019,000 after paying all expenses. That was a 5.69% profit margin. Not horrible. Not braggable. It's, it's nothing to brag about. But I've seen worse. But I've seen better. But a 5.69% profit margin, I can live with that. 2020, they made $988,479,000 in sales and revenue. And after paying all expenses, they retained $76,526,000. Now, they're a smaller company. I'm not complaining about the amount of sales and revenue they make because their sales and revenue is increasing year over year and they're a smaller company building up. I'm just referring to the amount that they keep after paying expenses, the profit margins. So they made $988 million 479,000 in 2020. They retained 76,526,000. That was a profit margin of 7.74%. A little better. 2021, they made 870,463,000 in sales and revenue. Retained 79469000 after paying all expenses. That was a 9.13% profit margin. So they're figuring out a way to increase the net income that they're keeping after paying expenses, which increasing their profit margin. That I like. Until we get to 2022. In 2022, they increased the sales and revenue again. 993196000 But that year, they only retained 43375000 after paying expenses. I don't know if they made a large purchase that year or whatever, but they only retained 4.37%. But in 2023, they got back on track. Their sales and revenue increased to 1 billion, 168,000. Well, I'm sorry, 1 billion, 168 million. 660,000. So they've crossed over into the 1 billion area. And their net income after paying all expenses, 115,401,000. So, and they were at a 9.87% profit margin that year. So that profit margin is increasing. Those sales and revenue are increasing but they're still building up a small company. Now, if we get to the return on equity, just like I said with the profit margin, it's not explosive, but it's decent. I wouldn't even put it at good, but I put it at decent. 2019, it was 8.24%, but 2020, it was 13.03%. 2021, 10.86%. 2022, it really dropped 
5.79%, but in 2023, 14.11%. So if you look at the profit margin and the return on equity, those were the two main reasons that I would have rated this stock as a two-star as opposed to a three-star. Their debt to equity is okay, it's manageable, 90.87% in 2019, 115.82% in 2020, 20, 148.74% in 2021, 148.16% in 2022, and 136.53% in 2023. So, if we talk about that, their balance sheet should be okay as well. And we see that with their balance sheet, their current assets exceed their current liabilities by all five years, and in four of the five, they pretty much double. And their total assets exceed the total liabilities all five years, not doubling them, but they double them in, in the first year, in 2019, but in the others, they just exceed. So I'd say the balance sheet is on its decent. This company does not pay a dividend. And I don't have a problem with that. Every company doesn't have to pay a dividend. There's more ways for you to get money out of a company than a dividend. But this company does not pay a dividend. And one of the things we love to see a company do is buy back shares of their own stock. And one of the things we hate to see it do, boo, is selling shares of their own stock. Well, they sell shares one year, but they buy back four years. In 2019, they bought back 146,555,000 worth of shares. In 2020, they bought back 162,984,000 worth of shares. In 2021, they bought back 37,170,000 worth of stock. But in 2022, they sold 6,547,000 worth of stock. Then we come to last year, 2023. They bought back 67,984,000 worth of stock. So we like to see a company buying back shares of their own stock, not as concerned with the book value, as long as it's not negative, but I'd like to see them buy back more shares. Now, this company does have free cash flow available, $43,133,000 in 126 million two hundred and thirty three thousand twenty twenty seventy three million five hundred and eight thousand twenty twenty one seventy seven million seven hundred and seventy six thousand in twenty twenty two and a hundred and forty a hundred and sixty four million four hundred and seventy five thousand in twenty twenty three I don't want to see a company with negative free cash flow. I like to see positive free cash flow. But more importantly, 
when I look at the free cash flow, I want to subtract the dividend that they gave out and see how much cash flow they have left over after paying the dividend. Because companies usually pay their dividends out of their cash flow. And if you're not paying it out of your cash flow, where are you paying it from? Are you borrowing money just to pay people dividends? Are you selling more shares of your stock just to sell, just to give people dividends? But in this case, they have enough free cash flow and they're not giving a dividend. So I don't see that as a problem. So let's wrap this up and let's look at the statistics on the stock. And we see that this company has a beta of 0.34. And the market generally moves at a beta of 1. That's how much movement you see in the market generally on day to day. Well, a beta of 0 0.34 means this stock is less volatile than the market. It moves less than the market. As we said, they don't give a dividend. But this company has 50.79 million outstanding shares out there available on the market. And it's 50.33 million that are publicly available for people like me and you to buy. Of those 50.79 million shares, 0.82% that's less than 1%, are owned by insiders, those who work basically and work in the company or are part of the company. Now, 0 0.82 may sound like a small number, but that's 0 0.82 of 50.79 million. It's not a small number. But the next thing is what I love to see. I never figure out how y'all who works out over a hundred percent, but I just like to see that hundred number. If we look at the institutional owners of this stock, large banks and other institutions, Yahoo has it down to 100.93%. I like companies being held by institutional owners because they're less fickle. They tend to hold on longer. This tends to be a little more safety in that stock. It's once those institutional owners start to let go, that's when you got to get out. Because when they let go, they're not letting go of 10 shares or 100 shares. They may be letting go of massive numbers of shares, which can make the price drop. In any event, their book value is 18.58, with the PB ratio being 3.86. The manager is Mr. Christopher A. Simon, born in 1964. We'll put him, I guess, around 59 or so. He is the CEO, president, and director. And Heyman Ives Corporation is in the medical instruments and supply industry healthcare sector. I believe they deal 
more specifically Blood Blood, but if you look in the description of this video, I will drop a video in there that you can look at, getting a clearer idea of what they do. In any event, guys, that's Haymanetics Corporation. Sorry for the frailty in my voice. If you watch my videos, you know I just got out the hospital. But in any event, you guys have a great night. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.